Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday broadcast. The message that you're going to hear today is a word that I gave to DeSoto, Kansas Faith Builders International Church a few weeks ago. This word is about the blessing. I've studied about the blessing. I've heard messages. I've got the tapes, read the books. But I was never completely sure that I totally understood the revelation of the blessing in Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing it maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. And I discovered that the blessing is not so much about material things. It certainly includes that. But you have to go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, where God said he blessed Adam and Eve. And you're going to find out what that means. You're going to find out how to implement the blessing in your life. And I think it's going to be worth you watching today. But before we get into the Word, here's Jeannie ministered to you in song, singing adoration. Redeemer of all men. 
mankind. You're the lion, the lion of Judah. You're the ruler of this whole universe. You're the most high, Messiah. You're the soon coming king. Holy, holy is your name. Surgery to remove a brain tumor left Jeannie Caldwell facing how to learn how to walk and talk again. She was reminded that the anointing removes all burdens and yokes, and he would teach her how to talk and walk again. It's the anointing. On the album Colors, where Jeannie sings that special song, The Anointing, plus many other powerful and uplifting songs to usher you into his presence. Colors is available for $14 plus shipping. Call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for offer number 15009 or log on to vtntv.com and click on shop. You'll be glad you did. Here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. Proverbs 10, 22, I've read it lots of times, but I've just been spending a lot of time on it the last few months because I wasn't sure I had the complete understanding of it. And I hope that it fits into what God's doing and saying here on your 20th anniversary. Amen. Let's read it together. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Again, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Now, I have heard this teaching for years. I've got books. I've got CDs. I've watched TV. I've watched all the things that deal with any time anybody's ever taught on the blessing. But I wasn't satisfied that I had the complete understanding of what this verse was talking about. Now, in, in the Proverbs... And even in your marginal reference or up at the top of your page, it'll tell you, uh, wise and foolish, virtues and opposing vices. That's what he's dealing with. And the scripture says, the blessing of the Lord. Say the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. It's real important. Not just the blessing. The blessing of the Lord. And we're going to find out what that is. It maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. And I, I, like I said, I've tried to understand it, and I, I never did, so I've been getting more into it, and I, I, I didn't really know fully why the Lord wanted to show me this. I know for my own personal benefit, but for maybe your benefit too. The blessing, there are all kinds of blessings in the Bible. You've got the... Uh, Noah was blessed. You've got the Davidic blessing. You've got the Abrahamic blessing. You've got the priestly blessing. You've got the blessing of obedience in Deuteronomy 28. There's all kinds of blessings. And, of course, in our Western culture, all we, all we think about the blessing is, you know, somebody sneezes and we say, God bless you. Could you bless you? We don't even know what we're saying. And a lot of times we don't even understand what this word means the blessing of the Lord. And this is what really went off in me as I was reading and meditating on this one day. The blessing of the Lord. What is the blessing of the Lord? Because the blessing actually began in the garden in Genesis. Go over there with me to Genesis chapter 1. And let's look at verses 28 and 29. Genesis 1, 28 and 29. 
Now, this is after God created man. He created a male and female. And in verse 28, it says, And God blessed them. Say it out loud. And God blessed them. Again. And God blessed them. Now, what does that mean? Oh, let's go ahead and read the rest of it. God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, behold, look, I have given you every herb bearing seed. The marginal reference says seeding seed which is upon the face of all the earth, every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat or for plenty. Now put these two together and you're going to see the whole thing and we'll take it apart and examine it. The Lord blessed them. Now some commentators say, oh, well, this was just a provisional blessing because they were given an assignment of replenishing the earth. So God just provided. But provisional means everything. Everything they would ever need to do what he called them to do. But notice the activation of the blessing. Notice what he gave them to fulfill the blessing. Verse 29. I have given you every seeding seed. So God blessed them. And he said, now... You're blessed to carry out my assignment in the earth. I have blessed you. And when God blesses you, you're blessed. Amen. Amen. But how is this blessing going to be manifested? I've given you every seeding seed. He gave them the blessing, but he said, you're going to have to sow the seed. You've got to sow the seed to participate in the blessing. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Amen. The blessing began in the garden. There are many blessings. But let me just say this as we start. Sin and demons can hinder the blessing. The blessing is not unconditional. The love of God is unconditional, but the blessing is not unconditional. The blessing is conditional. It's out there. God's given it, but it's conditional upon you living correctly and properly and not letting demons hinder it. Now, you also have to believe and know how to activate the blessing. And here's what I found just a few times. I only, this is only the second time I've taught this, Pastor. I taught it last week in our church in Little Rock. And I've taught it on VTN. It'll be on, on the broadcast on Arkansas Live. But here's what I've noticed. When I read this, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And the moment I say the word rich, I feel a kind of a sinking I feel a resistance to that word. And I, I didn't feel that here. I don't feel that here. But, but I do a lot of places. I do, I do sense that when you say that word rich, because to some people, some Christians, rich is a four-letter word. Amen. But so is poor. That's right. That's right. But they don't have near the reaction to, to poor as they do to rich based on how you were raised, what you've been taught. <laughs> People are more comfortable with poor yes, than they are rich. That's right. Amen. Like one old boy said, he said, hey, we weren't, we weren't poor, we was poor. <laughs> he said, we were so poor, we, we couldn't even afford the other two letters. That's right. That's right. They couldn't even afford the whole word poor, they just had poor. Yeah. But it's been more acceptable to be poor. We have built political dynasties on poor. We've built government policy 
on the poor. Now, this teaching is not about how to make money. This, this, that's not what the Lord was trying to show me. He was trying to show me that we have missed the understanding of what it means to be blessed. The church that I grew up in was a denominational church. Wonderful church, beautiful people. I mean, my sister is married to the pastor's son of the church we grew up in. But every Sunday you would hear this almost chanted. The, the, the associate pastor would stand over here. This church was so big, so huge, sat on a whole city block, had two pulpits, one for the reading of the scriptures and whatever stuff, and then over here was the preaching pulpit. They had two pulpits, and the associate, every Sunday we start off, and he would chant this almost, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I grew up thinking that was some kind of liturgy, some, some kind of sacerdotal liturgic, you know, thing that he learned in seminary. I would just, I, that's what I thought it was all my life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. It, it never dawned on me that that was in the Bible. But it is. Go over to Numbers chapter 6. This is the only prayer in the entire Bible that God himself wrote and gave to Aaron, actually through Moses, to Aaron the priest to pronounce over the people. Now listen to it. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Number 6, 22. Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. Now this is the priestly blessing. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now this word blessed and the Lord bless you and keep you. Let me illustrate to you what this word, what this word means. It comes from the Hebrew word barach. B-A-R-A-K-H, barach. If you know anything about Hebrew, the emphasis is with the guttural sound of the throat, barach. And here's what it means, and I'm going to illustrate it for you. To kneel down, to make oneself available, to do or give something of value to another. I'm going to say it again, you can write it down. To kneel, to make, a, uh, make of oneself available, to do or give something of value to another. And I had a hard time with that. I'm thinking, okay, the Lord said, the Lord bless you. Now, we have the Lord's prayer over in Matthew 6 that Jesus told his disciples, they said, teach us how to pray. He said, after this manner, pray or Here's a model for you to follow. But this was a prayer of how to pray to God. That's not what this priestly blessing is about. This priestly blessing was from God. He wrote this and gave it to man and said, The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Get, now get this. Every day for 40 years in the wilderness, Aaron prayed this over the people. God was saying, now here's what this whole word means. You know, in the Hebrew language, it's much more expressive and detailed than our language. Philip, put both feet on the floor. Here's what, here's what the priestly blessing 
from God is saved. Remember, it means to kneel down, to make yourself available. So God is saying, He, God, is kneeling down. Remember what Jesus, He illustrated this when He washed the feet of His disciples. They were arguing over who's the greatest in the kingdom. And he said, the greatest of the kingdom is servant of all. And he took their feet and he washed their feet. This priestly blessing, God is saying, I am kneeling down to you. I've come down to you to be a blessing to you, to make myself available unto you, to be gracious unto you. For my face, my countenance to bring you peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the priestly blessing. That's the blessing that maketh rich. The blessing of the Lord that provides every need. And all through the 40 years, even though they were stiff-necked, rebellious, <laughs> God personally delivered to their doorstep <laughs> every day. Amen. Fresh quail and manna. Glory to God. Now you go to the store today and try to buy some quail. It's a delicacy. And God told them, said, don't store this stuff up because it'll, it'll canker, it'll stink, it'll <coughs> putrefy. Significant of, I can take care of you every day. Amen. You don't need to worry or be afraid that you're not going to have something for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. And even their shoes didn't wear out. Hallelujah. Jeannie was telling me the other day that, uh, who was it? Joyce Meyer said, she wasn't talking about this, but she used this as an example, said, just think about the children of Israel. For 40 years, their feet didn't swell. Now, they're wearing sandals walking through the desert 40 years. You can drive across that desert today in a, in a day. Why did they go around in circles? They camped in the same camp spot every year. They come out. Weren't we here last year? Yeah. Why? Rebellion. They had to wait until all those murmurers died off. You don't want to be a murmurer. <laughs> I thought she said, and their feet didn't smell. That would have been a bigger miracle. <laughs> well, of course, you don't sweat in the desert like you do in Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, amen. This is the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich. And that's what Proverbs 10, 22 would say. I trust that ministered to you. The blessing is God's willingness to use His power on your behalf. God's a good God, and He has so many good gifts. He wants to give them to His children. But we don't serve God for His gifts. We serve Him because He's God. Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord? That's the first step. That's the entry level into the kingdom of heaven. If not, you can today. Right where you are, I'd like to introduce you to the Savior. Jesus Christ. The Bible says to taste and see that the Lord is good. Would you pray with me today? I'd like to lead you in a prayer. So wherever you are, if you will join me right now, if you mean these words with all your heart, you can receive the free gift of salvation. Would you just close your eyes and pray with me right now? Just say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Save me now. Take away my sin nature. Give me your righteous nature. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed with me today, I'd like you to have the book that's on the screen. God loves you. This book will help you get started right in your new life with the Lord. It's easy to get. Just log on to vtntv.com. You can download it for free. Or you can call 1-800-264-2525. Tell the operator you just prayed with Pastor Caldwell and you'd like that book. We'll 
will send it to you free. We're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, please let us know. You can email us at prayer at vtntv.com or you can call 1-800-264-2525. Now, our product offer today is the Word System. I first wrote this book in 1981. And what I realized was that God operates under a Word System. The Bible says over and over again, and God said, let there be light. And then Adam picks up that system. And all through the Bible, Old and New Testament, men and women of God began to operate God's Word system. Here's how you can get your copy. Watch this, and I'll be right back. When God spoke, creation came into being. He created man in His own image so man could operate the Word system the same way He did. God established a system of communication that uses words to create. God is looking today for a bold people who will learn to use their authority in the earth and speak His word. A people who will speak words of faith and power to accomplish His purpose in their lives and in the world. Pastor Colville's book, The Word System, dives into how our faith and speaking God's word can change any situation. To order your copy of The Word System, call toll-free at 1-800-264-2525 or log on to vtntv.com. The book is just $8 plus shipping and handling. The words you speak influence every area of your life. Speak creatively today and use The Word System that God has given you. I encourage you to get your copy of The Word System. God operates under a Word System. And the sooner you find out about it, the better off you're going to be. So get your copy today. VTN's on Facebook. You can find us at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. You can also follow me on Twitter, happy underscore Caldwell. And be sure to join Jeannie and me next week, same time. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If this program has ministered to you, please consider making VTN part of your regular giving. To make a donation or to contact this ministry, write to VTN, P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call 501-223-2525. Today's program is available to watch online. To watch this video on demand, log on to vtntv.com and click watch. You may also order a copy of today's show on DVD by calling 1-800-264-2525. Ask for the offer number on the screen.